Hi, Begbrook. I'm going to read to you for a three o'clock read today, Malala's Magic Pencil. Now, Malala Yousafzai um, is a Pakistani young lady who won something called the Nobel Peace Prize. She's got an amazing um, history. She's done lots to protect women's rights to education. And um, yesterday, she graduated from Oxford University. So this is quite um, a good time to read her story. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Malala's Magic Pencil. When Malala was a child in Pakistan, she wished for a magic pencil. She would use it to draw a lock on her door to keep her brothers out, stop time so she could sleep in an hour extra every morning, erase the smell of the rubbish dump near her home. But as Malala grew, her world changed and so did her wishes. Her right to attend school was threatened just because she was a girl. Instead of a magic pencil, Malala now picked up a real one. She wrote alone in her room about the challenges she faced. But people from all over the world read her words. And her wishes started to come true. Do you believe in magic? When I was younger, I used to watch a TV show about a boy who had a magic pencil. If he was hungry, he drew a bowl of curry and it appeared. If he and his friends were in danger, he drew a police officer. The boy was a little hero, always protecting people who needed help. How I wanted a magic pencil too. If I had a magic pencil, I would use it to put a lock on my door so my brothers couldn't bother me. Stop time so I could sleep an hour extra every morning. Erase the smell of the rubbish dump near our house. And I would use it to make other people happy. I would draw the most beautiful dresses in the world for my mother. The best buildings in the valley for my father, so he could open many schools where children would study for free. A proper ball so my brothers and I no longer had to play with an old sock stuffed with rubbish. Every night before I went to bed, I wished for a magic pencil of my own. And every morning, I would wake up and check my cupboard. But the magic pencil was never there. One day, I was throwing away potato peelings and eggshells at the dump. I was wrinkling my nose, swatting away flies and making sure I didn't step in anything dirty in my nice shoes. When I saw a girl about my age sorting rubbish into piles. Nearby, boys were fishing for metal scraps using magnets on strings. When my father returned home from work, I told him what I'd seen. It made him sad. Abba, I said. Yes, Johnny, he said back. I always liked when he called me dear one. Why haven't I seen that girl in my class? Because, he said, but he didn't finish right away. Because, Johnny, in our country, not everyone sends their daughters to school and some children must work to support their family. Those boys will sell the metal scraps they find. If they went to school, their families would go hungry. School was my favourite place, but I had never considered myself lucky to be able to go. My father had always said, Malala will live free as a bird. Now I wondered how free I'd truly be. That night I thought about families who didn't have enough food and the girl who didn't go to school and even about how when I was older I'd be expected to cook and clean for my brothers because where I came from many girls weren't allowed to become what they dreamed of. I knew then that if I had a magic pencil I would use it to draw a better world, a peaceful world. First, I would erase war, poverty and hunger. Then I would draw girls and boys together as equals. Over the next few years, instead of wishing for a magic pencil every night, I worked hard in school every day. I wanted to be one of the top students in my class. But soon, powerful and dangerous men declared that girls were forbidden from attending school. They walked the streets of our city now. They carried weapons. One by one, girls stopped coming to school. Abba, where are all the students? They don't feel safe here anymore, Jenny. 
How could a few men stop all the girls in our valley from going to school? If more people knew what was happening to us, I thought, they might help. Wishing wasn't enough. Someone needed to speak out. Why not me? I wrote about what it felt like to be scared to walk to school and how some of my friends had moved away because of the threat they faced in our city. I wrote about how much I loved school and how proud I was of my uniform. Once I started writing, I didn't stop. I wrote speeches and travelled around my country sharing my story. I even talked to a reporter from a famous international newspaper. People actually wanted to learn about my life. I spoke for all the girls in my valley who couldn't speak for themselves. My voice became so powerful that dangerous men tried to silence me. But they failed. And now my voice is louder than ever. Louder because people have joined me and together we make a chorus standing up for what we believe. We raise our voices for those in need, help people in danger, even if they're an ocean away. Think of the world as a family. Do you still believe in magic? I do. I wrote alone in my room, but people all over the world were reading my story. Millions now know it and helped me spread my message of hope. I had at last found the magic I was looking for. In my words and in my work. I am Malala. I've always wished I could make the world a more peaceful place. And every day I work to make my wish come true. One child, one teacher, one book and one pen can change the world.